Hello everybody, welcome back to another Cranky Films video. Today we're coming at you with every single Warhammer 40k Fractions White Part 2 by oh. Bricky. Woo, oh, boy. First part was so good. First part was really yes, good. Yes, was uh, so good. A lot so explained. Long. A lot explained. <laughs> yeah. But it's a lot this to take it. So much. And this one's even longer. Six, six yes. minutes longer. But... <laughs> Longer, nonetheless. Yeah, well. <laughs> so we, we should just go into it, not waste you guys' time anymore, and let's get learning. I hope he edits pants again, bro. I bet that took him forever to do. Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's get it. In a two-part series on the Warhammer races. If you haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description, and I highly recommend you watch that to get context for this episode. Yep. If you already have, go ahead and... Keep on watching. So after an entire Dang. episode of nothing but humans, we can now talk about chaos, which involves humans again. Yes. Yo. But less, we also got demons and shit. I just felt someone grab my ass. So like hard, Nick. So as I've mentioned many uh, times, my before, we discussed the warp, the image oh my God, the, legs. the hellish lands, yeah. the purgatory dimension realm between the material realm of our existence. Now, in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible, there are demons everywhere, things are crazy, all your <laughs> minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both formless and empty. It is vast and tiny. It uh, obeys the laws of time and physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort. It is a hot <laughs> culmination of just unknowable, eldritch, horrifying shit. And there are four gods that permeate in chaos and the warp. These are the four major chaos gods. And if we wish to learn about Whoops. chaos, we need to learn about each and every single one of these chaos gods. First up, we have Korn, and he is Korn. the easiest. Korn is Korn. your classic Satan. Korn. He is all about anger, murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne? I heard the first part. Korn. The whole idea is that he is all about the fury yes. and strength of battle. He doesn't care where blood comes from, so he long as wild. blood is flowing. He wants to <laughs> fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death, 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 death. That is corn. Very simple to understand. Next up, you have Love Zeech. Corn. And Zeech is the god of change. However, the god of change, it's permeates in so many different other ways. He's the most eldritch of all the demon gods. He has this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's always conniving and scheming and doing his best to cause as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, oh, wow. is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will and won't do. Every future and setting and every type of, of destiny or fate is all foretold and also changeable. It is set in stone while also completely random. He knows what everything is going to happen and also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask Zeech a question. Wow. That question leads to three more questions. And those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? And are wow. you even asking the questions? Or are you simply giving paths to answers and, and other horses? No way. I don't I, I don't want to think right now. <laughs> what? I don't I don't want to think right now. <laughs> I'm like, this is making me think too hard. Yeah, questions to questions leads to definitely universe definitely universe leads to answer to those two questions and then those questions also ask more questions <laughs> no way are you sure you're asking the questions or are you just making statements for it to lead to the answer that's that when I, that's when i go to corn and just kill people <laughs> question no questioning bro just killing bro exactly well, give me four answers then. <laughs> every death is a question all right let's get it <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with stuff. He is yes and he is no. He is the understanding and he is complexity. He is unknowable. And that's what the God of Change is about. Very bizarre. And he likes birds a lot. Nice bird. I, don't, I don't know why. Next up we got Papa Burb. Nurgle. Papa Nurgle. Nurgle loves you for who you are. Probably Papa not. Nurgle. He will murder you just the same. But Papa Nurgle right. is about rot, pestilence, death and decay. He is the end of everything. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. He is all about miasma, Oof. pestilence, and 
large bloating pus and, and organs and people just yeah, being sedentary no. sloth. He looks ugly. He has the idea oh. that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is certain besides decay and death. All of us will end up the same way and broken down through just sheer never-ending yeah. decomposition. So the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that, because we all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and yeah. wither. That's Nurgle, and he's got a general he's wild. Of Nurgle he art's cool though. And different kinds I bet he of smells bad. And sickness and things of that nature. That's generally Nurgle. He's pretty easy to understand as well. And he's uh, you're right, big dog. Big talk. Finally, we have Shut the talk. youngest of the chaos gods, huh. and that is Slanesh. Also known as the Prince of Slanesh. Pleasure, or the God of Unspeakable Excess. Slanesh is generally referred to with sex, but it's not the only Prince sex, of Pleasure. Just that's I like the cover of the fucking belly stuff. button. <laughs> Slanesh is just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11, but more like 17. See, we'll discuss Slanesh a little bit more when we talk about the Eldar, because they done fucked up. But the senses she, of the body. Done he, Look at that boy. Or whatever is mainly cool. about just the excess of emotions and <laughs> therefore sex is generally a large part of it however it's mostly pain and oh torture my God. lots of pain torture but sometimes sexually related or drug related. Right. lots of drugs but lots death drugs. like so the others gets off on everything no, extremes no. in happiness extremes in sadness extremes in pain and sadism and masochism and of course that goes along with the sex part of it as well it's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme very purple lots of exposed genitalia a lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff and that is generally the theme you go for from a physical side but it really embodies everything mainly looks like he has and, one boob and also the, the excessive <laughs> amounts of emotion so when it comes down to it you'll find a lot of them have things no one like has six boobs or whips oh. or any kind of bdsm style gear because it is unspeakable excess the prince of pleasure mm. everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening that is slanesh in a nutshell slanesh. a little bit bizarre and a little hard to describe oh, sometimes wow. but as we talk more about the dark eldar layer in this video you will understand it's far far better and far more than you want to they might be thinking why would anyone ever want to join chaos they all look horrifying screwed up and just frightening things, right well the thing is is that of course one your mind is put into the warp and the materium so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when you get into your head especially if you're a psyker sometimes regiments of the less mentally strong people whether they be civilians or say low-level guardsmen or conscripts can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff and they serve their dark gods or whatever god they personally refer however and this might seem strange chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil see the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being every soul every thing of existence this includes all the good things all the different chaos gods have another side to their coin corn might be death murder slaughter slaughter but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest trial by combat and honor corn will never lie to okay you. corn will never stab you in the back Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring, we're gonna murder each other hard right now. Yeah. It may not be a good thing okay. at the end of the day, okay. but it is that other side of the Corn's coin. Corn's cool. Him and Zeech generally yeah. don't get along because Zeech is right. that conniving That's schemer, but he's mm. also about the idea of hope. Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control whatever you want. The changer uh. of ways, that is Zeech. And of course, well. Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle does represent stagnation, death, and decay, he also represents finality an ending the fact that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end fear of the unknown fear of okay. change is not present with nurgle with nurgle okay. everything will rot and die and that provides that finality that ability that this is over we are all the same and we will all end the same we know the meaning of life the meaning of life is to live and die and rot 
and with that, it brings Rock. peace of mind. Slanesh is a lot more simple. I'm, While they are the I get that. Of I do. Yeah. I mm. get it. Um, Zeesh, I mean, <laughs> if you were going to follow any of them, right? I mean, maybe Zeesh, right? I mean, he's like the less, the least gory and pain inducing. Yeah. Right? I mean, I guess. I guess, uh, uh, unless like Nurgle doesn't just flat out kill you and you just wait to eventually perish, then I guess that's. That's, that's okay. the official one, yeah. Ultimately, like, right? But, uh, but, but also, young Corn, I, young Corn doesn't well, lie to you. Here's the thing, right? I wonder about Corn, <laughs> right? Like, does he just like? Is it just his enemies that he just like? He's all about the blood, and as as long as blood spills, like he's all about that. Um, like, so is it safe to follow him? Like, <laughs> knowing that like you're you're good, you know? I mean, like, are you good? I guess in or general. Or does he just not care? Does he just like he sees you? He wants to kill you. Even if you follow him, you're just gonna get you're just gonna get murdered. Or is it like that? I think, Maybe. I think it's probably just like enemies can You know, everybody's Maybe. fighting everybody at all times, anyways, in this universe. True. So. <laughs> I'm pretty sure just you won't kill his allies really. And if he does, he'll yeah. tell you straight up like, "Hey, I'm gonna kill you." Hey, big dog, look, I have had a rough day. Yeah. You see, I just need to You're right here. Some steam. <laughs> yeah, I need to bathe in some blood. I'm joining quick. this one. Yeah, you're joining this one. Worse than, yeah, of course. Yeah. Let's just get it. it. They are also the representation of emotion. So Nesh yeah. embodies happiness. Slash embodies yeah. excitement and joy <laughs> and pleasure. Not only in the sense of the physical, you know, bam style of bam, food, but also everything else like food and drink yeah. and okay. the air on your cheek and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and feeling. All of that is also represented with Slanesh. So you have to ask why are they always represented as super evil skulls and spikes on everything and want to murder everybody? I don't really got an answer for you on that one. Right. So my assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts, even if we don't act on them, and therefore they're projected in the warp more. That one's a little bit weird. I don't know. This is me spitballing right now, but I don't know. You need a you need a super bad guy. You already got the Imperium of Man. You need somebody to be a little bit worse than them. So you got mm. demons. Honestly, who cares? <laughs> you got demons. Demons. Look you at him. Got demons. So cool. Got demons. So combining cool. all this together on the tabletop, yeah. chaos demons are generally very melee based. They run in, go really hard. You have lots of summoning and conjuring, tons of spells. Generally a little bit frail, but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant mm. demons and smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons of big guys. Demons are as These they see. figures are so demons. cool. They're yeah. really slow. Uh, corn is super scary in melee. You've got Zeech who are far more into psychers and spell casting and then Slanesh who is all melee really 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 fast but squishy but in lots of hordes of tons of melee and, and pain damage of course so overall pain. the demons are a pain huge damage. part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction with a, the exception of a couple however the big part about demons is also transferred into the other nine primarchs we can talk about which are the chaos space marines wow alright I Hold think up. I'm joining Corn. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Are we doing that now? Yeah. We 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 choosing? Uh, I mean, I uh, I don't know, bro. I, Me neither. The the pain pleasure one, bro. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, look, Celeste? it has the highest highs, right? Like the food, bomb. Yeah. Right? It was talking about that. I'm sure the the the, the pleasures, bam. the, the bam. pleasures, pleasurable. Yeah. The pleasurable. pain. <laughs> Pleasurable. <laughs> the most painful. The highest highs, the lowest lows. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, you can have one boob and one no boob. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you know, one boob. You can yeah. be stuck like that for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's probably what I'm choosing. I'll probably go with corn. Corn seems like a chill dude. Yeah, corn we have. Yeah, one objective. Get it done, or you die. Zeus isn't the worst though. Yeah, Zeus isn't the worst, but you know. Knowledge. But because like he, he you know he's all about that uh, I mean he, he said you could have hope even if even if your fate looks grim you could have hope you know because he, he can pluck the strings of, of destiny yeah I mean, he you know, takes the hope really... away from you like nope What's... alternatively yeah right but why would you like go to him if like you I have a good good fate to good good destiny you'd probably be like dude my luck sucks 
my fate sucks. Let's just go see what happens. Yeah. Mm. What what's the other guy's name again? The 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 rotten dude. Nurgle. Nurgle. Yeah. Nur Nurgle. Nurgle. Yeah, Nur Nurgle. Nurgle's also a cool one because like you just go on. Cool, once though. again, we don't know the full extent of these guys, so we, we can't like really tell so how life smart. would be. They're so cool. But uh, Nurgle seems pretty chill too. I mean, you're just going there. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna die one day. That's all yes. I need to know. I can just yeah. live out my life how it is, and if I die, I die, right? Yeah. I mean, hopefully it's like that. That's what I we can only assume. Hopefully he doesn't just cast like, rot like cells on you. Just just for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, hopefully it's just like, you know, if you're here, you're going to eventually decay. So live your life. Hopefully it's like that. But hopefully it's also not like he wakes up on the wrong side of the bed and just like this town, he just like, time to decay. <laughs> Rot. So hopefully it's not like that. You're Maybe. dying. All right. Who are you going to join Zeus just, just real quick? If not, mm. it's all good. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't really choose anyone. I get guys. it. I get it. All right, all right. I don't you, like you, them. You, I don't you're like gonna them. You're going to be a foot know, soldier. They're awful. They're awful. You're going to be though. a foot soldier. You're going to get controlled I by one of them on accident. Just don't be a demon, Zeus, bro. You get just it. don't be I'm going. I'm going to ignore them at a party. All right. Next, we have, we have the Come Chaos. On, they're gods, bro. Really? They are. They All are right. gods. They're taking you. Warp mind control. Next, we got Chaos of Stardies, though. Ooh. That's interesting. <laughs> so, Horse and all of his boys, all of them in the Primarchs, they have all also become chaos boys and they yes. all have their own special chaos legions specializing in so many different things just like the adeptus astartes the angels of death the regular space marines chaos space marines are a whole lot different than the regular space marines they have space the same marines. armor doing the same training and toughness they just specialize in different kinds of things and also a lot of the primarchs have ascended into greater deep is it greater demons they're demon primarchs at this point Damn. gigantic horrifying man demon hybrids that are pretty awesome if i'm going to be honest they look really really cool but them and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus for everyone else considering the raw strength and that looks crazy of a legion of space marines imagine that entire legion just converting to chaos and immediately fighting you it's generally pretty horrifying there's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down. But you've got the Emperor's Children with Primarch Fulgrim, Ooh. loyal to Slanesh. These people. Is that a they face on his shoulder? Yeah. They're just sensory overload. Oh my god. Tons of drugs, tons of torture. And I think Fulgrim is a demon Primarch right now. And oh god, I am terrified to see what that man looks like. At least on the tabletop, because. Emperor's children are not good people. You've got the Iron Warriors, which are kind of like opposite of the Imperial Fists with Primarch Perturabo, I believe is his name. They're Chaos Undivided. They just kind of serve Chaos in a general aspect instead of choosing one of the four. But the Iron Warriors are big on the siege and fortification, and they're basically entirely against the Imperial Fists and a major rival. Perturabo, I believe, is also still alive, and I'm also very interested to see what he looks like because. Demon Primarchs are badass. You've got the Night Lords mm. with Primarch Conrad Kurz. Conrad Kurz is dead, which is good because he's oh. a sick fuck. But the Night <laughs> okay, Lords are good. generally about terror, terrorizing people and terrorism. They're generally about fear and probably so. You've got the World Eaters with Primarch Angron. Oh, still oh wow. Teeth. Also excited to see. This is arch crazy. If you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch Angron. you will ever know. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him angry. So oh, he could damn. be angrier. Angron. Fucker's mad. You've got the oh Star with Primarch Mortarian. They actually have their own special codex and their own major army on the tabletop. Mortarian himself is actually one of the models. And, and look at him. Look He's at cool. him. It's That's so sick. cool yeah. looking. His of wings, course, the eyes. Based, obviously. That's interesting. Nurgle based. I love all the art. It's sick. It's so cool, man. Yeah. I just... The art, dude, and the figures are sick as well. Yeah, the figures are the craziest part, though. <laughs> Once again, they're a lot, yeah. I think. I haven't looked I, at the prices, I... but I would imagine they're a you lot. Did? No, I haven't. I got to. Uh, but I would imagine they're a lot. I mean, like a regular figure is a lot of money. I would imagine a whole yeah. set, a I, whole I, army. Honestly, in the future, I, I would like to get a couple. Even Not to play it. There's like the own like, them. It's just too complicated, but the own. Yeah, yeah. Just, nice. just own them. Yeah, like, like, a, like a nice display piece. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Oh, yeah, let's go. So very slow, but very tanky. You've got the word bearers with Primarch Borgar. 
Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment. Okay. The Lord Bearers are genuinely the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. We got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked, nerd. We got the Alpha fucked. Legion with Primarch Alpharius. Oh, Bayon. wow. Chaos, I think. And then finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus. Jesus, looks like Anubis. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have their own book, <laughs> just with the Death Guard. Maybe that's Magnus what's an inspiration is also of. A tabletop model. He looks super cool, as you can tell. And they're all super heavily Psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. Oh. They look pretty neat. Yep. But overall, with all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, that you can play as a lot of a lot of different ones, but the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See, this right here, this is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. They strive merely to hold back our fury and might, and it consumes them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on the tip of their tongues, in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, evolved. We are them, but that is so wild. much more. As hardcore as that quote is, the saddest part is they're mostly right. Chaos is basically unkillable. You could probably get rid of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Damn. Chaos oh. is unstoppable. The warp wow, is unending. Okay. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just keeps on coming and it's just barely being slowed. Chaos is by far the biggest threat. They are without number, their legions are everywhere, and yeah, they're pretty scary. So, I, I promise, I we're see. done with humans now. Let's talk about some Xenos. Dude, what? imagine killing a boss, you know, like a named boss, all yeah. by yourself. Yeah. You worked hard, you're, you're almost dead, and you killed it. And then, like, a year later, you see it there again, but stronger. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, what up? Imagine, remember do, do, when do I slit your throat? I, do they appear the same? Uh, or uh, I mean, like... the what he was talking about, like, they just come back, so... I would Probably. imagine they come back the same. Well, I just Maybe figured slightly if their different. soul came back, it might come back in a different body, though. Yeah, but it's like still it might be in an original shape still, but slightly that would altered. Suck though, bro. That would suck. It would suck. <laughs> but damn, no, unfortunate. Yeah, they're 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 dead. They're losing, sadly. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah. Elder. Eldar. So let's talk about the Eldar, or also known as the Eldari, Eldar. which are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. They were, as well, oh. responsible for the creation of Slanesh, the newest demon god. Ah. How did they do that? Debauchery on a world ending Debauchery. Scale. See, back in the day, it was just Korn, Zeech, and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient millions of years these eldar however have a bit of a sensory problem you know every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared to the normal however with eldar as their race advanced so excessively and they became so re self-reliant and everything became so easy there was no requirement for food production anymore there was Damn. no shortages everything was basically done Everyone was so comfortable, and that comfort breeded this weird sedation, and that sedation breeded the requirement for more and more debauchery. Debauchery! Debauchery! Yeah. 
Debuttery! When <laughs> everything you have can be so easily acquired, you will end up down this Time road for the panty raid. pure debauchery. God. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so powerful, things like SpongeBob feeling, blood. happiness, sadness, and just evil and good, all needed to be satisfied and satiated. And the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more with worse and worse debauchery. It started off with things like sex and drugs becoming so much more rampant because Those these legs. are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily accessible. It would get to the point that made Sander <laughs> Cohen in Bioshock look sane. All right, this is the kind of debauchery it led to. It was constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual and sadistic or masochistic fantasies that only elevated and elevated. And this was species wide. People started Dang. going down darker, more depraved, and more violent paths as time went on. However, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at this depraved species that they had become and said, I no thanks for me, dog. I'm good. And they bailed. These are the craft world Eldar. Craft they world. left on these giant continent sized starships called Craft Worlds. Wow. They believed hmm. in learning the old ways continent of the Eldar size. and pushing yeah. away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves on these giant That's craft massive. worlds far in the wow. outer reaches of space. They even had this Whoa. thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the Imperium? Well, the Eldar yeah. is something way safer called a Webway. And the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. So all of this continued and it continued and it bloated until Slanesh just burst forth. All that emotion, all that mental, well, thought processes, I suppose, all of this in such a condensed space. Don't forget, this is all being shot, all their souls as well, into the warp. All of this depravity right into the warp. Everything goes back so, to the warp. What happened? Boom! Slanesh was birthed and killed off 90% of the entire Eldar population. Oh my god. Untold trillions trillions had their souls Whoa. ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by slanesh demons the entirety wow. of the eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed to the prince of pleasure all of them got fucked up it was so <laughs> bad that it literally ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the eye of terror that's literally this like quasi horrifying gateway portal from the materium and the immaterium right next to Cadia <laughs> and it is horrifying so this Slanesh also known as she who thirsts by the Eldar slaughtered the entire population except for a couple those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape. Let's go. But Sonesh Let's go. got their sights on them. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh, craft world oh. or not. What about those people in the webway? Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. The Eldar population Sorry. right now is so massively small. It is minuscule. Art, man. Compared the to art, man. Dude, it's there's so just cool. so much. There's so much different uh, of the same race. Yeah. yeah, there is. <laughs> got the ones on the ship. They're chilling. They're they're just original guys. All the ones are going like you no know, pleasure drugs. They're all dead. Pog. Basically. Right. And then yeah. the, the guys who got half eaten are now like an entirely different thing on their own. It, it's mm. crazy how much stuff that one race could become from one yeah, incident of a uh, yeah. chaos god being born.
Which is cool. Sure. I didn't think we'll ever see a chaos god be born. No. I know, that is really sick. Yeah, because, like, you know, the other ones is like, we thought they were, like, established, right? Yeah. Damn, that, that, yeah. that was a world event. Well, universe event right there. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. I wonder if there's, like, an animation on that. That seems, like, pretty that'd be, cool. To see. Oh, that'd be so awesome to see now. That yeah. Would. Like, oh, like wow. giant burst goes off. You see people just fall into the floor, people questioning. And then dot death, obviously death. And then the birth of her. The birth. <laughs> you wild. My bad, my bad. To any of the other pop well, most of the other populations in the universe. The Eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed. And they understand it very well. Since the time of the mm. fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place, and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it no matter that i walk other paths i see the stars stain red with the blood of the monkai and though their wars do not concern me i would gladly let them destroy one another i know that mm. to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom and though all i see is darkness i know that i will not flinch from my destiny and now let's talk about cute plastic models Bro, I'm straight up not a What? Time. The first playable uh, race we have for They're the cool Eldar though. Are they're the tough. Eldar and living in those craft world starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of craft world, almost like a Space Marine Legion. Each craft world is it, in itself its own special kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons of psychers across the entire Eldar population and their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting, but of course rather fragile. Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar in their own right really rely on this to keep their species alive. They need to think about deception and the strangeness of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand, losing a few people in battle, while hurts a lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It seems like they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. That's good. They're still a doomed race that being sucked into Slanesh every time someone dies. They're cool, but though, they are definitely doing a little they bit better are. than they were before. Eldar are yeah. fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. They also call humans Ooh. Bonkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Um, that is a derogatory slur for humans in the Warhammer world. Uh, why is it called Monkai? Well, it's because you can't, in your game, call people monkeys. That's <laughs> crazy. On the tabletop, exactly what I Monkeys. said. Not very tanky, generally pretty squishy, hit like trucks, and move at Mach 5. Fast, oh my hit my hard, God. die fast. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only carry on. It is a message even a human can understand. Wow. Dang. So, Drukhari. Let's talk about the Dark Eldar. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> so, those yeah. people I mentioned in the webway, in the super deranged cults, and the depraved people of the Eldar, in the webway, they didn't 
quite get a hold onto them. Slanesh like has them, but it has them on like by the pinky finger. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off oh. by doing Slanesh things. The Dark Eldar are by far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal race in all of Warhammer 40k. Oh, These damn. are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction, to go into planets, raid them, and take as many slaves as they possibly can to torture them for one, five, ten, twenty, a million years, because that torture will keep them from dying. They look very BDSM really style too. I get it. They definitely yeah. have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more of that kind of leathery black look to them. But let's mm. example. Let's say you are an upstanding imperial citizen living life on a regular planet. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you with a deatomizer and you will be destroyed in a millisecond and that's it. Not the worst way to go. Cool. Uh, you are invaded by Chaos oh. Marines or something. You take a Ooh. bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach and you get cut in half. Painful, yeah. but Dead. not the worst. Uh, the orcs <laughs> arrive. They beat you to death. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Tyranids, they eat you alive. Yeah, whatever. Pretty rough. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Uh, this is going to get a little... <laughs> bad. My bad. man. You pray you die. I think I got kind of thick. You are instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony. 24 7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain based, like stimuli drugs, directly into your nervous system. They will slowly run razor blades across your skin. They will flay you and pull out your teeth and your fingernails one by one. They will remove your appendages and your skin and wait for it to grow back so they can do it again. They will murder and torture and use the R word that rhymes with grape, your entire family <laughs> in front of you and do the exact oh. same thing to them. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape anywhere and everywhere possible. And this will occur for 20 years until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted, crushed and twisted into some form of trophy a fleshy trophy or a ring or a couch or a tv stand or perhaps a <laughs> hat while you are of course still alive I'd like to be and a lamp breathing, and you will become a moaning fleshy trophy for eternity that's effing wild that you'd be alive a yeah moaning the fleshy Elder. they are the most depraved most horrifying race in all of 40k they look the part and they do it so they all don't die. They are literally forced to do it, this. Because yeah. if they don't, yeah. Slaanesh's grip so will get harder will and they That's will have their harder. soul crazy. away. So long as they keep doing this, Slaanesh is like, you're doing good, man. You're doing so good. Okay. You keep that shit up. Thank you, you know, queen. Thank you. That's, that's, Thank that's you. the Dark Eldar. That's the Drakari. Oh my god. They are horrible. On the tabletop, yeah. they're actually kind of... Dude, the fuck, those guys are just... just horrible, bro. Dude, <laughs> I, I feel like I go... I go having corn. I can't, bro. That's nutty. Oh my god. Dude. Dude, that sucks. They, they have to do that. I'm sure... At first, they didn't want to. And then they're like, well... We got to. I got mean... To we got to. That's F it. They couldn't do anything else, though? <laughs> That's so crazy. The craziest Pulled part is... Pull their teeth out. Pull their nails out. Yeah. And get turned into a lampshade. Well, That's they're still it, alive. They're still alive. Yeah. That's crazy. They're, they're effing couch now. They're alive and breathing. And people, they're just standing on them watching their damn TV. Oh, yeah. They never die. That's crazy. You're just a piece of furniture. You're just a living yeah. piece of furniture now to them. Is that all bad though, bro? Do you gotta fight anymore, bro? Are you tortured? You're cool. You just get to get. You just have to be sad on, bro. Probably. I'm not pretty sure you'd be mentally broken. You. I know you would be. You. You, yeah. you just days to go by. You don't even know. You just. You just there. You just an empty soul now at F that these point. Guys, bro. <laughs> so this is how we proclaim. F these like... dark Eldars. 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 Yeah. Eldari. Eldari. Like yeah. I don't like him. Damn. That. This, this, 
Rip feels bad for the race, though. Like, effing really. Yeah, it does. Feels like, bad. Well, I don't know. But, you know. They're it, in a predicament, and then they have to cause awful things. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it is what it is, right? <laughs> Kinda true. Let's get it. Kinda like Eldar, but more extreme. They are even squishier than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, skirmishers, really quick, speedy, like get around them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's most of the Dark mm. Eldar. Look up the definition of Grim Dark in a dictionary. You'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Republic Commando. A oh. quote from uh, Mr. Vect. We are the lords of despair, masters of terror, dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful indeed. Dark Eldar. I know they're saying they're being forced, Queens. but it sounds like they like it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think eventually if you do something long enough, for this yeah, whole time, plus you're born into it, to it, it becomes like a natural thing that one would do at that sure. point, you know. So, yeah. Clowns. What's the matter, Andy? Don't you want to have some fun? The Harlequins are a bizarre race of Eldar. They're demonic. We're still in Eldar. <laughs> They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, but in a more clown theme. They're, they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They <laughs> guard something called the Black Library, which is this giant tome of never ending knowledge deep Love in the pants, heart man. of the Eldar webway and also guarded yeah, by nice. the god named Kegarok, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Kegarok. He's the laughing Kegarok. god. But it's the Eldar's laughing god? And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar these depraved individuals would find funny and this is the <laughs> god of that it's it's a horror clown these are gods of horror for us normal people for them they're like oh ho, ho, it's so funny they're all dying horribly ho, 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 honk honk they're very bizarre honk, honk. and difficult to describe <laughs> uh they've escaped the ruinous powers of slash somehow but their main thing is guarding that black library and the harlequins just they're demon clown performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. They're good in melee. They're they're demon clowns. I I'm not sure. Yo. I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whip. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. <laughs> They're very strange. The Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison they range from rekindling oh. their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns they clowns all over the place but honestly they represent quite well and are rather interesting especially with the whole slanesh murdering everyone bit so yeah eldar <laughs> now bugs. eldar Money following bugs. we finished the eldar <laughs> finally hey. there's so much eldar which makes sense. They, they, I guess they went through the most change. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Like, well, there were trillions and trillions, and they were there for millions of years. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they fucked up, and then now, now look at them. Fucked up. <laughs> now look at them. They were once a high and mighty race. Now they're dying. Now they're scared and dying. And scared dying, yeah. and they're they like eating grapes all the time. Oh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to the bugs. Oh my God. They following me. He looks nice. Hey, the bugs. The bugs. The tyranids. The now, bugs. You want to talk something a lot more fun, a little more simple than all this crazy Eldar shenanigans? Let's talk the tyranids. They're tyranids. bugs. They're, They're like crazier. Zerg. Hell okay. yeah, they look like Zerg. You want to know why I look like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, apparently StarCraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning, hence why they look so much like Eldar Zerg. 
and the Imperium of Man. Ah. Like, kind of space marine Those That looked like Zero Suit Santa, Santa is actually. Mm. To me. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't ya? Tyranids <laughs> oh. are a giant infestation oh. of unfathomable proportions. These are giant, extremely bio-advanced oh. hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent but and like the flood and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction in all of 40k because all oh. they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom okay. nom the entire nom 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 and we food. Also, this Tyranid okay. hive mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across oh, wow. the stars? That's, well, you need the warp because you need crazy. Your stellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire yeah. giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of orbit and just will massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in so oh, many wow. varieties too, all oh, wow. based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, <laughs> and Gene Stealers, all the way to the high Gene Stealers, yeah. The no way. Why'd you take my Gene Stealers? They my beds. Giant battle fleet, and even something as crazy <laughs> as the Hierophant Bio. Oh my god. They come in all forms and sizes, depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have wow. extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms. And, and they've come to snack. When it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying wow. organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? What's up? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six oh or my. seven Tyranid hive fleets. Behemoth. Kronos, all these different kinds of hive fleets, and they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections oh. of the Milky Way galaxy oh, have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying. Because yeah, as far is. as we know, we could just be surrounded on all sides by Tyranids. <laughs> Hell the only no. reason you may not hear a whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters all these giant bugs swarming in killing and eating everybody and evolving well, i mean as cool as there are some cool characters the swarm lord old one eye you can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them as awesome as they are they're simple they want to eat you they want to yeah. eat you and absorb your biomass yes. they are simple bugs if you want something a little more yeah. complex <laughs> Talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want. Yeah, gene stealers are wild. Walking, they sound wild. Whenever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. My genes. Gene stealer cults are what? a special brain of tyranid that can slowly infect themselves yeah, yeah. into different kinds of society. And by oh, infecting great. them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these real, like regular humans, pray and believe into their tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords, and I think they're called patriarchs all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers and these are called gene stealer cults an entire high world of the imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little bit they also have this cool, like, wild. Mad max look which is really neat they are definitely one of the bigger <laughs> threats to the imperium besides chaos i, I keep saying biggest threat to the imperium they're up there though because you, Dingus, stepped on a bug in middle school. Oh, oh asshole. There is <laughs> cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. 
This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Tyranids. Cool. Oh, they are. But I think it's cool as the orcs. No. <laughs> the, the, the bugs are sick. No, they are, man. Yeah, and, and I agree. Like he said that they are the least violent. Yeah, they have no other ulterior motive, motive but to eat. Okay, they're not doing it for their, for their like, bloodlust. Yeah. They're just, they're not doing it to... To, to sacrifice to a god, they're just doing it because they hungry. Just half they hungry. Okay, they hungry. Yeah, but they, they, they're, they're hangry. wild though, and they're there's an infestation, and they're scary too. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. the the gene gene stealers. Steelers, yeah, though that that's very interesting. That's crazy. They just go in there and rewrite the genes of the humans, and then now they become super like bug human hybrids. Yeah, so, yeah, it's crazy. No, we have is the orcs. But dang. Orcs, 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 orcs. What is that? Orcs. Orcs. So yes, the the green monsters, the green tide, the green skins. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so oh, yeah. many of them. Smorks. The only reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. <laughs> orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc. Big orc knows best. He <laughs> true. the power of imagination. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. Hell the yeah. The biggest orc is the man oh, who goodness. understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is <laughs> hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like to fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. You got your boss over there, and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you yeah. an example for the other orcs. And then you can't yeah. fight because orc dead. And orc dead. Oh, orc dead. dead can't fight. <laughs> yeah. Orc dead. Orcs. They <laughs> scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense and because they believe they have the mental imagination that that machine will run it'll run if that machine's out of gas you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs and the biggest orc is behind the wheel and you run out of gas some orc behind you like oh oh zog we're out of gas and the big orc is like no we're not i filled the fucking gas tank up earlier and all the other orcs are like oh yeah I, you did do that and then you turn the the fucking mech back on and it works again what does it That's have crazy. gas yeah. probably not but it works the power of imagination the orcs are they sick paint things red because it makes them think that goes faster they paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color you want to know why you ever seen a purple orc didn't fucking think so. Orcs <laughs> are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the Eldari That's time crazy. frame. But that, back then they were called Quirks. Oh, wow. They were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so many orcs there are about as many orcs as there are tears yeah wow well, great tide i get it who knows but they keep on you know Ooh. murdering each other so it's not too bad of an issue orcs are okay, entirely yeah. comic relief their stuff is slapped together that makes no sense their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to but they work because they think it works because they imagine <laughs> that it works uh, orcs, are orcs cool. care only about who cool. is the biggest orc and they will follow the biggest orc and then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. 
And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc, they murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. That's orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing. Yeah. That's, I, that's actually kind of cool though. RNG yeah. based squad. <laughs> That's a, that that's a shit I'll probably play. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I know that. I like the randomness and stuff. Oh. Yeah. The high roll, high roll, high roll. Let's go. Big damage. Oh, I, I, uh, my character died. I rolled a zero. Tragic. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, the arch is sick. When they shoot, they roll a dice, and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher, because they're well trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're just super well trained. Orcs, yeah. they hit on a five or higher. Dude. If they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill it. That's, that's funny. They're so wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you roll well, you roll high and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. And if you don't, you lose. I, mean, I bet there's a lot, of, a lot of salty games people have had orc, from coin flip. Which is why yeah, from orc players. From orc players, I can just like imagine just the orc player just like, don't worry, I'm good. It's an orc player. No, he rolled six four times in a row. <laughs> he uses the biggest <laughs> weapon he has four times in a row. Oh my god! Wipes out the army. <laughs> <laughs> Friendships probably ended. Dude, that yeah, sounds that. so fun. The orcs sound fun. Yeah, I, I yeah, I imagine he's telling the truth, but all the orcs players are just like chilling. They'll, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah. I, I lose like half the time. They can't anyways. get salty, bro. They're like, I signed up for this. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> they know their odds of losing. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, orcs are probably cool. incredibly fun. Yeah, be a salty bitch when you play orcs because yeah, things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game, but if you're gonna have fun. And you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you're gonna play some damn orcs. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. Honestly, I think I'm a, I'm a fucking orc main now. <laughs> <laughs> orcs yes, orcs yeah. sound so cool. They, they sound yeah. chill. They, probably, they do. Probably just they play them. Well, I think they might be a cool Bro, like, intro. Man. Intro. Tell you what, stuff. man. We'll, we'll make a, a, a Warhammer 40k series, bruh. Oh my god. He, all three of us will challenge each other, bro. And then there'll be a competition <laughs> yeah. about who got more points at the end, then it'll get like a trophy. We get oh we get a god. we get a, a, a flesh couch. <laughs> oh dude, I want that. Well, better that win, is, win, better man. win. Better win. Oh my god. Oh you guys yeah, the Necrons. The Necrons Thank are you. spooky scary skeletons and very grim dark again. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had mm. the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Quark, Orc, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people. Not because they were personally shitty, but because their lives were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived on and everything just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them and therefore they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy. 
and they found this group. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine them kind of like the Forerunners in yeah. Halo or the Zelnaga in StarCraft, right? These Old Ones were these sp strong, oh, pretty much omnipotent beings, and they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the Old Ones said, piss off. Not really, they were all horrible <laughs> about it, but they did not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, yeah. of course, took this very well and waged war with them. Kind yep. of under this uh -huh. united band. Why wouldn't they? The Necron different dynasties didn't it's really like It's worth it, though, other. right? Yeah. yeah. This one man, the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race <laughs> was to do this <laughs> giant legs. war with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known as the War in Heaven. And this is actually like a multi-stage war because during this war in heaven they discovered the star gods a whole new race of people oh. known as the katan or the katan these star gods were also very much like old ones almost omnipotent beings and they too had the key to immortality and so the necrons went to ah. them and said hey can you help us fight off the old ones can you help us kill these old ones you the katan and the katan said yes and in fact we can help provide you with the immortality you so get. Yo! So oh, then the we don't gotta fight. the king of the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them. But this, of course, had been a horrendous trap. And the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the oh. souls of the Necrons. Damn. This was their plan all along. They consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. And then That's with crazy. the newfounded Necron army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their wow. genocide complete They're sick. and full genocide cool. of these old ones. The old ones Gee. did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight oh. off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Their entire so race cool. completely removed. Full on, 100% genocide. However, during all this, the Catan, so just infatuated with their victory started fighting hey. each other for fun for sport and for small differences doesn't matter the katana with these over overpowered people they're going to eventually hit each other at some point and as they began just menially fighting each other the eldari and the orcs actually started pushing on the katana's borders a little bit giving them a little bit of a run for their money and as this continued this is when the silent king who retained his consciousness decided to leap into action and start a full-scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this revolt was bloody, as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Catan and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults. Oh, that's they crazy. They actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with the Necrons wow. having the entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Quarks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy what? diddled with a green console and now the Necrons are back and they see all yeah. these primitive races on their lawns and they think, get the fuck off of it. The <laughs> Necrons are back, super advanced. Oh and my they're goodness. And they claim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs. 
Uh, I... Tabletop. Dude, the Necrons are cool too, the man. The Necrons are yeah. cool. That whole story was cool with the Catan. Oh my goodness, yeah. dude, this this lore. I'm I'm in love. I'm in love with this entirety, bro. It it's so sick. Poor old ones. Oh huh? my god. Ah, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is what it is, bro. They're selfish. Yeah. Uh, should have shared, bro. Should have shared the power. Yeah, it said the the other one, but the other other guys. Now they're all yeah. just robots, and then they yeah. killed off all the old ones. The old ones are just wanting to keep to themselves. But with their souls ripped apart, and the Catan ate their souls, do they, are they really alive? No, they're just they're just like robots. Those, yeah. they're just, they're I guess they got robots. their own self awareness. I guess now. Yeah, until you know they did revolts and then enslaved the the Catans. I wonder if they knew about their past from then. Because I, I don't, don't think know. they knew anything unless they kept I their don't brain. Think they would. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked, dude. Necrons? Awesome. They're sick. Awesome. Love with them, too. Yeah, there's so much, like. Every one is awesome. <laughs> I can't. I really can't choose my favorite faction, man. I can't. Yeah. Especially from part one, all the ones in part one. The humans are so cool. Yeah, the humans. And these are so cool. Everyone just gets. I don't even want to say better and better. Just, just as interesting. Yeah. Enough to make me question my favorite every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I may choose one, and then it switches instantly. True. I can't, bro. Yeah, I get it. Pop, they're a lot like that. Tons of undead Egyptian skeleton robots that when they die, they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating. Hard to kill. Tons of crazy Guess stuff. That's it wild. Seems they did achieve immortality. As oh, wow. Fight with. Pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote yes, from the wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also pretty smug. Trays in the infinite, especially. Little, little <laughs> Still your head. girl. But Still speaking girl. of dickheads, last race. Let's talk the Tau. The Tau. The exact the formation of the Tau Empire is not entirely this understood. Time. However, a long, long time ago, many thousands of years ago, up in the 40k world, that is. Some Damn, it's late. Navigation vessels were going around God. different areas, and they saw a primitive race, blue people, smacking each other with sticks and stones. They thought, yeah, dumb Xenos race who gives a shit, and they bailed. Then this giant warp. Oh my God, the skirt! <laughs> right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then, once that warp storm, six thousand years later, subsided. Hello, those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. And now they have gigantic starships and Gundam robots and lasers and railguns and mechs, and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is generally the Tau Empire. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in hand, Okay. where they have the overarching oh. prophets being the ethereals who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit. But then you have all these different races directly underneath them and they all work together in this big group as this large foreboding race that tries to spread mm. their weirdly pseudo-religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. That is generally the Tau. 
And if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with tons of Just missile parts, heavy rail rifles and rail guns, and burst cannons and ion accelerators and void shields and all this stuff. And that is generally what the Tau's all about. But you're probably thinking, Bricky, this doesn't sound that evil. This doesn't sound very Grim Dark Warhammer. Uh -huh. And you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying Grim Dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really liked the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer didn't really like <laughs> it that much. So see, the Tau get a lot of hate. And a lot of that hate isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40K universe very well. They lack that super dark, dramatic, kind of high gothic level the Imperium has. They don't have the weird yeah. kind of like grungy stuff that Chaos or City Orcs do. And the Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. There's that. Is that why he's wearing a skirt? <laughs> Probably. Uh, tabletop Tau are horrible at melee combat, but exceptionally good at ranged combat. So they blast everyone from really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. Damn. So it basically just uh. forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're gonna win every time because they're the Tau, and the Tau are really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, I uh, get it. for style and such. But this is actually one of the things I wanted to end this yeah, video with. Zoners. Is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes. Of course I will, but it's all generally <laughs> the same. The legs. <laughs> legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot, and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what you like. In Warhammer, well especially said. now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. You should only be playing what you think is cool. You like the look, you like the models. If you're talking tabletop, that is what you should be going for every time. It's what you think is badass because things change all the time. But the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something interesting. Every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told. The universe is vast and exciting and while it is dark, depressing and horrible, that is the damn charm. And out of everything I've told you in these two videos, is there anything you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, and so much that can be done, you can find yourself having a pretty great time. Thank you so much for watching this now. video. I hope it has been informative yeah. to you. Nice. If you'd like to see more of me, Bricky, do we have twitch.tv. Bricky, Bricky, Bricky. Bricky's the MVP you making this lore video. In which I was yeah. wearing all of my Make sure to go yeah, for it. It's entertaining, man. Follow so him and all that. White for the green screen, which is a little unfortunate, but it's fine. If you'd like to see merch, it is in the description. Also, yeah, check out his merch, too. My Patreon page yes. at patreon.com slash Bricky for more videos like this then that would also be wonderful. So Twitch, merch, Patreon, anything if you want to support, that would be fantastic, I'd appreciate it. If not, I'm just stoked you got all the way to the end of the video and that is enough for me. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, brother. we're having some more content <laughs> like this out in the future. Thank you so much Please. for uh, sticking around this long. Uh, thank and, you for uh, making being it. being with me through this pretty rough time. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, I think, all I got. Also, before I go, let me leave you with my favorite Warhammer quote. Oh. He who scoffs at the power of the lad's gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them. Bye bye. <laughs> Dude, wow, 10 out man. of 10 again. 10 out of 10 again. You are correct. Damn. I like Bricky. Yeah, Bricky's sick. Hey, he's sick, man. We only oh, seen two of his videos, but it was two hours of his videos. So, <laughs> more Basically, than enough man. to like him.
<laughs> yeah, no, he's very entertaining, bro, and he speaks well. Yeah, really he well. Does, he does and he speak explains well. explains well, and he sells the factions, too. He man. really like, does. He speaks well about them, and then he just gets you on board. He really does. Yeah. He's not really biased, too. I mean, he has his favorites. Yeah. But... He likes all... He, he, you can tell he generally likes everything. He does, man. It's so yeah. cool. I will be biased on what, one thing. What? What? He looks really good in a skirt. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> My He's not man. Denying, bro. He does. He's not denying. He really does. He looks good. He looks good in all of his legs. I might well, yeah. say, bro. Look at that. Look at that man. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, dude. Once again, all of our thoughts already throughout all this video, but every single race through part one and part two, really, really amazing. Lore yeah. on points. Really, once again, really makes us want to like go even more into this. Yeah, and I might even want to play yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, 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 no, 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 we gotta learn how to play, play it. it. It seems complicated. Uh, it's expensive and expensive. It's Who knows? If, if the tabletop. Who knows? Is Maybe it's not. No, I'll, I'll, Maybe if we really like... want to play it, dude, we're drawing paper of each unit we want and uh, use them like that. F no. it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> playing poor man's Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, god. Anyways, yeah. you guys, thank you guys for watching. Well, and stick through uh, this entire video. It's so oh, long. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's really much appreciated. Much if you have anything yeah. you want us to react to, go leave it down in the comment section below. Oh, Huge oh I want to know. I want to know what your guys' favorite factions are. Terrell. Right? Yes. Favorite faction. Really Tell us that. And do you guys play the game? Like, do you guys play the tabletop or not? Because, you know, if so. Tell us how the experience is with that, and if man, we gotta learn about how to play the tabletop if we're thinking about learning how to play the tabletop, you know? Yeah, spill the tea. <laughs> that that's gonna be that that I have a feeling it's gonna be really complicated. Anywho, oh, yeah. I feel like that's gonna be right. Yeah. Anyways, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Really do appreciate your support. Remember, if you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It really does help us out a lot. And we've been the Cranky Films Channel. And remember, stay cranky.